In this episode of Home Music Studio One, I want to talk to you about selecting the best audio interface for your needs. That's coming up, so don't go anywhere. Welcome to Home Music Studio One. My name is David Maxey, and uh, you can also check us out on the web at homemusicstudioone.com. This is the, the show where you can learn how to produce professional audio on any size budget, and I'm very glad that you have joined me here today. I also want to point out that if you're listening to the audio version of this show, it is also available now on YouTube in video format as well, and you can head on over to our YouTube channel by going to youtube.com forward slash H Music Studio One. That's H Music Studio One. And uh, we'd love to uh, uh, hear from you there as well. You can join in on the conversation and see the video feed of, of this actual episode. You're listening to episode number 18. And uh, in just a minute, I want to talk to you about discovering how and uh, some of the questions that you need to ask in order to properly select the best audio interface for your needs. And so we'll get there in just a moment. But, you know, if you really want more uh, tips and more helpful information, exclusive information, you can also join the hundreds of newsletter subscribers uh, that are part of the community now where we're just growing. And, uh, you know, I, uh, in exchange for just joining that list, it won't cost you anything. I put together another free ebook that answers one of the most popular questions that I get, and that is entitled Understanding Compression in the Home Music Studio. And so uh, if you want to take another step, to, to learning how to develop professional audio on any size budget and, and taking your projects kind of from that amateur to professional, head on over to homemusicstudio1.com forward slash free gift and uh, you can join the hundreds of community members that are already on that newsletter list. And, and just as a thank you from me to you for joining that list, I'll get a, a link out to you right away for instant access to that free ebook entitled uh, Understanding Compression in the Home Music Studio. Also want to make mention, if you haven't found us on Facebook yet, head on over to facebook.com forward slash home music studio one. And uh, you know what? Honestly, I'm kind of, uh, I'm a little bit blown away because in the last week we've added uh, somewhere around more than 150 likes to the Facebook page. And so, you know what? Join in on the conversation if you haven't found us there yet. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. You can do that again by facebook.com forward slash uh, home music studio one and uh, you'll find us there as well. Uh, with that, let's get into what I want to talk about today. Uh, I want to address selecting the best audio interface for your needs. And now on our last show, I kind of gave you a, a little tour of my studio and talked through and, and shared through by the video a little bit of the things that I have and some of the gear that I have. And I told you that I'm going to begin to outline the process that I follow when I'm recording a song. And I'm going to begin to give you a closer look at the gear that I'm using. And uh, real important is don't forget our understanding of what we're trying to do uh, because there's a lot of options out there and I'll explain kind of where we're going in just a minute. There's a lot of different choices of selection from gear to software to computers to instruments and I want to kind of simplify this along the process of, of showing you how I record a song kind of from an A to Z process here and give you some pictures along the way of what I personally follow and the very first thing that you need to really kind of address is your audio interface and selecting the right audio interface and right off the bat I want to ask, answer the question because you might be thinking well what is an audio interface? Uh, I have right here uh, in the range of affordable audio interfaces. I've talked about this before. I'll also put a link to this particular unit um, on the, if you go to the, the site, homemusicstudio1.com, look in the toolbox link there, and uh, you'll see a link to this. This is uh, made by Focusrite. This is the Scarlet 2i2, and uh, this is an audio interface. And uh, you might be thinking, well, what exactly is an audio interface? There's really three primary things that an audio interface is used for, uh, and there may be a few others that kind of you'll find along the way depending on the unit that you get but the three predominant main things that an audio interface is going to do is this it's going to give you a place to either plug in a microphone uh, that you're going to be able to capture the audio to your computer 
or it's going to literally be the microphone itself with an audio interface built inside. So number one gives you a way to capture or plug in a mic that is going to capture the sound, which is very important, uh, or that might be uh, in the case of this particular unit, you've got a, a, the ability to plug in a microphone, but these inputs here also double as quarter inch inputs. So you could plug in, say, an electric guitar or a keyboard with quarter inch directly into there as well. So first thing it does, it gives you something to physically plug in the gear that you're using, or in some cases, you may have an audio interface that is built inside of a microphone, and it's allowing you to capture audio directly from the microphone itself. Um, the second thing that it does that an audio interface does, it allows you to listen to what it is that you're recording and uh, whatever you're playing back. And that's very important. Uh, you want to be able to tweak the sound before you're recording it. If you're using, uh, you know, if you got a, a room that's kind of live or not live, you need to hear what's going on so that you can make adjustments as, uh, you know, you're preparing to record your tracks. And then you also need to be able to hear what you're playing back. Uh, a lot of times, maybe you do an acoustic guitar and then you want to add a vocal on on top of it or you got a drum set happening and you want to begin to layer other instruments you need to be able to hear what you've recorded in addition to listening to what you're recording back into your uh, your computer based recording system again so the second thing an audio interface allows you to do is is monitor what it is you're recording uh, and what it is you've already recording to be able to play that back and add more tracks uh, recording at the same time with that and then uh, really the third thing that it does which is really the uh, the major part of this it, it is uh, it is the device that allows your audio analog signal to be converted into, say, digital ones and zeros. It allows that analog signal, like in this case, I'm talking in this microphone, the element in that microphone is essentially uh, a magnet to a certain degree. And, and there's some other technical things happening there. But the audio that is being captured by this mic is then being converted from that analog signal to a digital signal, allowing me then to process that through my recording software or my digital audio works station which was on my computer so that is is essentially what an audio interface is and there's all types of audio interfaces this guy right here is right around 150 bucks and the reason that it is on my top 10 list of my most favorite audio interfaces is because of the quality for the price that you get for $150, uh, it comes with, uh, it, at least when I bought it, it came with a copy of Ableton Live, which is kind of a basic setup. It's a light version of it. But you know what? If you're just getting started in home recording, you've got a lot of options uh, to just get started with. It also came with some plugins, some compressors, some reverb, and some other things that would work in almost any digital audio workstation if you've already got something. Um, so that's pretty good. I mean, that's great. Uh, the Focusrite plugins are really a great starter pack, and some of them are just very useful. Okay, so if you don't have a basic setup, you, you're going to get that as well if you buy a, a you know a Focusrite product like this. Um, it also has phantom power. One thing to consider when you're looking at a unit is uh, if you're using a condenser microphone that needs phantom power to power that condenser microphone, you need to have an audio interface that has phantom power enabled. Uh, it also has a separate monitor output from the headphone output. So you can take a headphone out directly into this, but you could also send that separate monitor output uh, on the back of this guy to say a pair of studio monitors. And these outputs are balanced outputs, which is very important. Uh, I'll put a post, uh, a link to the post that I talk about balanced versus unbalanced outputs and inputs uh, at the bottom of this show notes as well. But that's very important to understand. And uh, then of course you've got a, you know, your selector between is the signal going into this? Is it a line signal or uh, like say a guitar or something? Is it a line signal or is it more of a balanced uh, low end signal, low Z signal or uh, like say a microphone would be? And so you got a few selections there. Of course your volume to select the input of that as well. And uh, this other selection option here allows you to have a direct monitor of what it is that you've got plugged into this so you wouldn't get any delay from the source that you're plugged in and listening to as you're kind of tweaking that to get it ready to record. So really some cool features. Um, the other thing I love about the particular uh, Focusrite product, at least this particular one, is a full 24-bit 496K on the, the sample rate there as far as the recording quality. And that's important. You want to have the ability to record 
uh, as high as quality as your computer will allow, whether you use it or not. It's nice to have that ability uh, for the more you grow and the more you realize of what you can do and that quality is important. And it's a USB 2 uh, output. Uh, basically, USB is, is uh, you know, pretty uni universal serial bus. So uh, you're going to be hard pressed to find a machine that doesn't have a USB input that'll work with a laptop or a desktop or any other device, uh, you know, any other computer that has a USB input on works with Mac and PC and Linux. So those of you guys that are Linux fans as well, like myself. And so um, all those things are things to think about when it comes to the audio interface. But I want to kind of narrow this down uh, just a little bit even more, uh, because all of that is is well and good. And that, that's important to think about. But there's really kind of three primary questions I ask myself when I'm preparing to purchase an audio interface uh, or I'm, I'm deciding exactly what I'm going to use. And I think these are very important questions in addition to uh, kind of the breakdown that I just gave you of what this particular unit uh, offers. And I'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute as well. But the three questions that you need to ask yourself uh, when you're selecting an audio interface, uh, again, reminding you that there are so many options out there. And the reality is, is some of them aren't great but there are a lot of great options. And so you may find a few that are just kind of cheap and chintzy in your budget. But let me tell you, uh, there are really a lot of options that are out there nowadays. And so selecting the right audio interface can mean the difference from a real kind of nasty analog sound to a nice high quality uh, professional sound. So you want to really be careful. And you know what? It's extremely achievable on any size budget. You just got to know what it is you're looking for. So let me give you three questions that I always ask. Uh, the first one is very simple. Remember, uh, uh, recording professional audio on any size budget. The first thing I always ask myself when I'm going to purchase an audio interface or I'm going to uh, recommend something to another person is what is my budget? Okay, how much money am I working with? Uh, the reality is, is you want to try and get as many features as possible for the budget that you have. And so sometimes just reaching for something you're familiar with or something that your buddy said, oh man, this is awesome. Sometimes that might not be the best audio interface for your needs because your budget doesn't allow for it. Or maybe your budget does, but some of the features that that particular audio interface has is not what you need or it may not have what you need for the same price. Let me give you an example this particular audio interface does not have what is called an insert on either of these microphone channels. Now, why is that important? If you were doing voiceover work or you were recording where you wanted to use, say, uh, the, the case that I'm using right now, this microphone, this is uh, the uh, MXL 990S, and I've got this running through my Allen and Heath board that you can see behind me, and I am using the insert on that board to send the signal of this microphone in and out of a compressor that also has a noise gate on it. And uh, if my audio interface did not have an audio insert on the channels, then I would not be able to do that. And if that was something that in my case, I need to be able to do uh, using that noise gate really is the primary purpose that I'm using that compressor for, but also to uh, to kind of protect a little bit of the clipping in case, uh, you know, this is a live recording. And so when I'm recording, I want to make sure that I'm not clipping out the input of my uh, audio interface. So I've got just a light compression on the really top end of the signal going in. And so that's that would be important for me, but if my audio interface that I was using to record, in this case, I'm using my Allen and Heath board for the audio interface, but if I were recording on this unit, it would not have inserts per channel, and that would be an issue for me. And so even though it's a great audio interface, it's only $150, has a lot of cool features, if you needed an insert, it would not be the best option for you. And so uh, you need to think about those things in relation to, first of all, your budget. How much money are you dealing with. That's the first place I would recommend anyone to start selecting an audio interface. Um, number two question that it comes to selecting uh, the right audio interface or the best audio interface to meet your needs is what are you going to be recording? What are you going to be recording? And I know this might seem like, well, uh, duh, you know, uh, but here's the reality. A lot of times we, we like to look at new, cool, fresh toys, and we're not really thinking what we plan to record today, as well as maybe a couple of years down the road. If you've got a budget that's a little bit limited, you need to think about where you're going to be in the future, as well as where you're going to be today. You want to give yourself options for expanding and growing when you get uh, used to recording and you kind of get the bug of recording like many of us have. Uh, you may find that you want to be able to do more things. 
And uh, even though uh, you had a certain budget, you could go a couple different directions. If you bought a microphone with a built-in audio interface for, say, $150, uh, or you bought an audio interface that allowed you to plug in, say, a Shure 58 or a microphone that you already own into that, those are two different roads that you could go. The microphone that has a built-in audio interface is great for voiceover work or acoustic or vocals, but you're stuck most of the time with that exact microphone, and uh, many times those units do not even have any kind of inputs for say an electric guitar or a keyboard so you need to think about that what is it that you intend to record for that situation maybe you'd want an audio interface similar to this one that would allow you to upgrade your microphone down in the future that would allow you to input a keyboard or an electric guitar directly or the output of a, a pod or something similar to that a, a you know a guitar cabinet emulator whatever you're using you need to think about what it is you're going to plan on recording both today and in the future okay and uh, then the third question i ask myself is what type of computer setup am i going to be using and uh, what is very important here is is a couple things number one the operating system are you uh, using Windows, Mac, or Linux, or uh, you know what, what operating system are you using? Because your audio interface needs to have software drivers to support the operating system you're using. And uh, you know what? I always Google something before I go to buy it, and I, I I see if I can download drivers from the manufacturer website. In my case, I'm using Windows 7 64-bit, and so I always got to make sure that before I purchase something that they have 64-bit drivers for Windows 7, and that they have been relatively successfully used by other people and uh, the other thing you need to consider is what software do you intend to use to record with your unit may come with software and that's kind of a, a you know a really inexpensive route to uh, uh to just get started with with your audio interface use the software that it comes with or maybe you already have a copy of pro tools or cakewalk uh, sonar x1 or uh you know or, or logic whatever you're recording with you need to know if your audio interface can can talk to the recording software or the daw digital audio workstation that you presently have um, and so those are kind of some major major things to consider what computer are you recording you with you also need to look at the hardware specifications for that device if it's a USB uh, output then you need to make sure that your computer has a USB input if it's a firewire, you need to make sure that your computer has a firewire input or you may get a nice cool, uh, you know, paperweight sent to you in the mail or you might buy it in the store, get it home and find out you can't even use it. OK, so very important questions to uh, to ask yourself is what is your budget? First of all, number two, where are you or what are you going to be recording And both? Think about that today with your current projects you have in mind and where you think you might need to be in the next year or two. And then number three, uh, ask yourself, what kind of setup am I? I using is the audio interface I'm considering buying does it uh, does it meet the software requirements that I have on my computer uh, do I have the right inputs the USB or the firewire input on my computer am I using the right operating system are the right drivers available for that as well uh, what recording software what dot am I going to be using and so ask yourself all those questions and then uh, just a couple other things to think about when selecting the best audio interface for you is understand that it is relative okay uh, I would highly highly recommend personally the focus right products uh, however, within the Focusrite product lines, there are a lot of different options, uh, some different budget range, some within the same budget range, but different features. Are you recording to, say, an, an iPod or um, maybe an iPad? You've got some options there in the Focusrite product. And you know what? The number one reason I would recommend Focusrite is because the preamps for uh, a lower end budget, they have very quiet signal to noise ratios for the preamps. And that's, that's important. When it comes to plugging in a microphone, you don't want a lot of background noise competing with the source you're trying to record. But you know what? Within there, think about what you're trying to record physically. Do you need to record a stereo signal and a third microphone at the same time? Do you need to have multiple outputs being able to record to multiple tracks, more than just one track at once? You need to find those things out, look at whatever it is that you're considering, and ask yourself, well, what do I need? If I need to record a, a stereo music track and I also need to record a a microphone uh, you know input and I want those things to be able to be on three separate tracks my audio interface needs to have that ability many audio interfaces even though they have multiple inputs only output at two tracks at 
one time. So those are important questions to ask yourself. Again, all related to what it is you're trying to record. Um, I'm going to put a, a couple links of some of the ones that I would recommend within, uh, you know, great budget audio interfaces. You'll find them by heading over to homemusicstudio1.com forward slash toolbox and uh, you'll see all my recommendations uh, within uh, you know a, almost any size budget of an audio interface uh, that I would recommend and uh, in there I've got kind of the, the manufacturer specs for them so it kind of help you zero in on maybe what you're looking for and uh, with that hopefully this has been helpful to you guys if you've got any more questions I would love to hear back from you I'd love to hear your thoughts make sure to post your comments in the sections below uh, you can also send me an email at dave uh, at homemusicstudio1.com and I'd love to hear back from you. Give us your feedback. And just one more reminder, if you haven't joined the hundreds of, of uh, community members that are signed up for the newsletter, you could do that by heading on over to homemusicstudio1.com forward slash free gift. And I'll get that ebook out to you uh, entitled Understanding Compression in the Home Music Studio. With that, uh, until next time, this is Dave Maxey with homemusicstudio1.com.